So do you want to know one of the most misunderstood financial tools ever in the history of financial services? It's life insurance. Oftentimes people think that you only have to die in order for you to use it. Well, after all, there's the word life insurance inside the word, right? Well, oftentimes people think that only for dying and only people that get rich are the people that you leave that money behind too. So in this video, I wanna share with you 10 life insurance strategies, 10 plays that rich people use life insurance to benefit their current generation while alive and boost their wealth inheritance to the next generation. So before I jump into it, let me read you these interesting facts about life insurance. Many Americans view life insurance as a means of protecting their families from unpaid debt. Eight out of 10 consumers overestimate the expense of getting a life insurance policy. Fewer than half of people without life insurance surveyed in a study say they feel financially secure. The same survey, however, found that 68% of life insurance owners say they do feel financially secure. Fourth one. The number of Americans who believe they don't have enough life insurance has more than doubled since 2010. 44% of American households would encounter significant financial difficulties within half a year if they lost the primary wage earner in the family and 28% would reach this point in only a month. More than 50% of Americans overestimate the cost of life insurance by 300%. 30% of Americans believe life insurance is only for end-of-life expenses, leading them to not purchase enough to provide income replacement or allow wealth transfer. And this is due to COVID. Life insurance premiums increased by 21% in the second quarter of 2021, the largest year-over-year -year increase since third quarter 1987. So September is considered Life Insurance Awareness Month. And what I'd love for you to be aware of is how rich people use life insurance while alive versus when they're buried in the ground. When I was serving the United States Marine Corps, I was flying over Dana Point, Laguna Beach, uh, Laguna Nigel in Southern California. We're going to our training areas. And as soon as I was flying over these people's homes in their backyards, I was thinking to myself, what are these people doing? How do they get this type of money to buy these type of homes and live in these type of neighborhoods? So I started to study what rich people do. And outside of what they do, I also wanted to know the behaviors and the conversations they would also have with other rich people. Now, I'm from nowhere. I'm from Chicago. Our family immigrated here from the Philippines. So if I decided to get rich, I couldn't wait for my parents to give it to me. I need to find a way to create it. Now, I want to be the generation that started the wealth creation process of our family lineage forever because I make the decision today. So number one, if you want to use life insurance as a strategy play today to help you become richer sooner than later, number one, life insurance is used for living benefits. What's living benefits, Matt? Well, living benefits is if you've ever heard of anybody suffer a heart attack, stroke, cancer, and survive, guess what? Living benefits for the right type of life insurance policy, which by the way, a lot of life insurance policies still don't offer this. The right type of life insurance policy has this as a rider to make sure you can use the death benefit, not when you're buried in the ground, but when you're alive. Now, this is much different than terminal illness benefits where you have to be terminally ill. A lot of life insurance policy will have that clause, meaning that if you have a doctor that signs off, said, listen, you got 12 months to live, you got 10 months to live, you got less than a year to go, they will offer you a terminal illness rider on most policies and you can exercise that death benefit and use that death benefit and receive that benefit while you're alive for that last year that you are alive. But living benefits is completely opposite of that. The life insurance company says, if you just survived, this change in health and you survive, where well, you're gonna get some money right now up front. A quick case study of this is Dustin and Kenyon Frampton, the guy that actually built my website, moneysmartguy.com. He reads my website, he's watching my videos, he said, Matt, I think I need to be a customer. And lo and behold, he gets some policy, I think for 60, 80 bucks a month, something de minimis. And guess what happens 18 months later at the age of 38 years old? He has a stroke. Now, I won't get into it right now. All I have to say is, if you wanna check out that video, Watch this video right here to see how he used that living benefit to expand the homeschooling of his children and expand his businesses because he brought proper coverage while he was alive, young, and healthy. So if this resonates with you, please put it in the comment section below. I want living benefits on my policy. I want living benefits on my policy. So therefore, it's a reminder for you to go back and search somebody, an insurance agent in your local area, or come in or reach out to us to find somebody that can help you with a policy with living benefits. Strategy number two, supplemental retirement income. 
Oftentimes people have a 401k, a individual retirement account, a traditional retirement plan. People may have a pension, but in a traditional retirement account, sadly, guess what happens when you use that money for retirement? You gotta pay taxes. If emergencies come up and then you decide to liquidate some of your 401k and don't pay it back, you have an early withdrawal penalty of 10% in addition to the income tax you have to pay on the amount that you withdraw from that retirement account. What about Roth IRAs, Matt? Aren't Roth IRAs pretty good? They are, they're excellent. If you plan to be middle income for the rest of your life, no problem, put your money inside a Roth IRA. But if you plan to be rich, you plan to be wealthy, that's the purpose of this video, because you are growing your income, you eventually might be phased out of your Roth IRA. Meaning that you make more money, and sadly cannot contribute any longer to your Roth IRA, so you phased out, and the benefit of having tax free withdrawals down the road is now exhausted. Why? Because you decided to make more money. What life insurance policies will do is a supplement that says, this doesn't care about age, doesn't care about when you use the money, doesn't care about how much income you earn. If you properly structure a life insurance policy, a permanent life insurance policy, which is a combination of whole life or a universal life policy or index universal life policy, supplement the cash that you otherwise would put inside a Roth IRA or a non-matched contribution you have to a qualified retirement account, you put instead and redirect those instead into a maximum funded life insurance policy, it can create for you a tax-free cash cow for you down the road. Strategy number three, key person. If you happen to be in business with a partner, right, and your, your, your partner has a wife, well, what happens, sadly, if a partner decides to quit or a partner decides to leave the business and, or sadly, in worst case scenario, die, well, a key person insurance strategy allows you then to have a conversation with a surviving spouse to say, hey, let me buy out your shares of the business since you are inheriting the business, and I'll take over the business from here. The other strategy for this also is a key person policy is you might look at investors down the road, they might invest in your business. But however, they say, you know what, if we're gonna give you millions of dollars to expand and grow your business, we want you to have a life insurance policy. I remember when our CEO, founder of PHP agency, Patrick and David, we got an investment of $10 million to grow, expand our company. I remember Oscar De La Hoya and his investment team said, you know what, Patrick and David, I remember I was at Patrick's house. Before we issue you this loan, you gotta get a $10 million life insurance policy. Had Patrick not gotten that $10 million life insurance policy, who knows what would have happened to that investment into PHP NC, and who knows if we have ever had an exit of our company in June of 2022. But since he was insurable, since he was young, since he was healthy, he was willing to get that policy, no problem, Patrick got the policy, and bam! $10 million came into PHP NC, where I was expanding and grow our firm. A large part of it went to technology for us to become a FinTech type of financial organization. And guess what happened? We had a massive growth in our business, explosion in our business because of using a policy called key person life insurance. Another situation happened to me where I was, I was texting my IT guy. Hey, IT guy, hey, listen, the Wi-Fi your office is, is not up to speed. Fix it, fix it. And I wasn't getting a response. Come to find out, I told him, listen, if you don't recall me, I'm gonna find somebody else. I like you, I'm a loyal guy. You, you're not a vendor to me, you're a partner to me because I've done business with you for many, many years now and I've trusted your services. And he got back to me later and I said, Matt, I, I apologize, my partner died. And for the last two months, I've been trying to get in the house, trying to get into the safe to get the keys to the equipment locker. And guess what? The wife, the ex, was giving me a hard time. If he had a key man policy, he would have been able to take that policy, buy out the spouse, get the keys to the locker and continue the business or hire somebody, have the cash to hire somebody of like and equal ability as a former partner. So therefore his business continues to flow. But since he didn't, he almost lost a good paying customer. So these are one of the strategies for you to continue to expand and grow your business in case the worst case scenario happens to you. The next one is collateral for loans. I did a video here about certain big businesses today that expanded and grew. Why? They got money from their life insurance policies because the banks didn't trust what that business endeavor was all about. Namely, Disney. Like what bank back in the day would loan an entrepreneur money for a theme park? Like what the heck's a theme park? But guess what Disney did? He went back into his life insurance policy and said, hey, hey bank, if I put this money here, would you match me? And guess what happened? It's exactly what happened. Here we are, Disney where's at today, because he used the collateral from his life insurance policy while alive, didn't have to die, while he was alive to say, bank, I'm a serious entrepreneur, I use money from my life insurance policy, you can say I'm putting my money where my mouth is. If something happens to me, not only do you have the life insurance policy that benefit, and also the collateral in case I'm alive and don't pay you back, you can use this money to pay off the loan. Fifth strategy using life insurance is college plan. Really, Matt? For my kids, seriously, that's correct. You can get a policy for your child as early as nine days old. Listen, a couple days ago, great news happened in our family. I'm now officially, yes, a grandfather. My 28-year-old son 
and Sarah Rose. They had a baby birth on Labor Day. And uh, Kaleo, welcome to the world. I love you, can't wait to meet you at the shooting of this video. I've not met you yet, but to do a surprise visit, don't tell anybody. But anyway, make a long story short, college planning as early as nine days old, my granddaughter will be getting a life insurance policy. Why? Because of college funding. If we continue to pack this policy of cash, pack it with cash, tax deferred growth, tax advantage withdrawals when she decides, to go, if she decides to go to college 18, 19, 20 years old, or if she decides to instead start a business at 18, 19, 20 years old, guess what we have inside the policy? We have tax advantage, cash free, either loans or withdrawals to start her business or pay for her college. And here's the thing too, let's say your child isn't uh, 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 nine days old or 10 days old. What happens if my kid's a little older in kindergarten or maybe first or second grade or maybe even high school? Well, you can pack a policy by restructuring certain assets into life insurance so the so therefore, when you fill out the FAFSA, remember that FAFSA when you uh, applied for student loan? Federal application for financial student aid. When you use that FAFSA form, you're gonna have to put your assets in either countable or non-countable assets. Money that's inside retirement accounts, equity in your home for, uh, uh, for, a, for a public school, or life insurance policies are considered non-countable assets. Why is that important for you? Because that drives down your expected family contributions, and therefore allowing you a more handsome compensation or student loan aid package to help your child go to college without you string out so much cash for student loans. So if you want more student aid and help and grants and scholarships to come your way, consider helping your child to college plan using a life insurance policy to reposition your assets to countable and non-countable assets while you are alive. Number six, charitable giving. If you have a policy, you might want to put 10% or 20% or maybe even 50%, whatever percent you want to have towards a nonprofit organization. Or if some of you have highly appreciated stock. Some of you have highly appreciated real estate. So instead of doing a typical 1031 exchange and hopefully down the road somebody inherits it in your family and therefore they continue on the tax deferral of that property because of the appreciation of the real estate, once you consider a charitable remainder trust, you donate your policy into a charitable remainder trust. The charitable remainder trust sells the policy, the proceeds come into the charitable remainder trust bypassing any taxes. But wait, Matt, what about my children? Didn't I just disinherit my children because now it goes inside the charitable remainder trust? That's correct. That's why you establish a irrevocable life insurance trust, take some of the proceeds from the charitable remainder trust, funds a life insurance policy, so the children now that you're passing inherits that policy when you go meet the Lord. So therefore, the children don't feel that you just disinherited them. What's the benefit for you while you're alive? You can get this piece of real estate, this stock off up your back, without worrying about the tax triggers while you're alive. And here's the thing too as well. We did an interview with Garrett Gunderson, who wrote the book, What Would the Rockefellers Do? And this is exactly the same strategy using an irrevocable life insurance trust of why the Rockefeller family today has passed on generational wealth and they're one of the wealthiest family in America today still. Why? Because they use the proper use of number six, irrevocable life insurance trusts to pass on wealth to next generation. And at the same time too as well, back to number four, any child that gets birthed into their family is Rockefeller, guess what they get for that child at nine days, 10 days old. They get that child a life insurance policy. That's correct. So all these things kind of work together as you can see. Number seven, Lock in your insurability. If you want to use life insurance as a strategy down the road, but you're no longer insurable, well, guess what happens? You can't use that money for a collateral for a loan. You can't get the key person policy. You won't be able to put the money inside a retirement plan for, to supplement your Roth IRA or 401k and IRA plan. So therefore, the sooner you get a life insurance policy while you're alive, while you're younger, and while you're healthy, get that policy because you don't ever want to be uninsurable because the majority of these things I just discussed up to this point are not available to you if you are uninsured. Number eight, here's my favorite one, anti-GoFundMe. Listen, my job for the rest of my career is to make sure GoFundMe is used for the original purposes of GoFunding your idea, your invention, your business, your new movie. GoFundMe was not supposed to be used, in my opinion to plan for emergency expenses. That's what life insurance policies do. And hopefully during this month of Life Insurance Awareness Month, people are aware that you can get life insurance for literally, or health insurance or living benefit insurance for literally pennies on the dollar if you get it when you're younger and when you're healthier because you don't ever want to use GoFundMe. Why? You put your business out there, number one. You went through a health challenge. You sadly had somebody in your family pass away. You're going through an emergency in your life. And what, you put your financial business out there because of the lack of financial management, lack of awareness done on your part. And on top of that, most people never raise the full amount that they're looking for using GoFundMe. And to add insult to injury, guess who also charges you a fee? GoFundMe charges you a fee. 
The credit card companies charge you a fee. So if you want to make sure you keep all your money and unnecessarily prevent it going to other sources and keep it into your family, to people that matters the most, use life insurance policy where you're alive because when medical emergencies come up, the number one reason why people file bankruptcy is not because they charge you the credit cards because they're loving la vida loca, but because they have faced a medical emergency. And you can prevent that while you're alive by getting the right life insurance policy. Go back to number one, to pay off and pay down things that help you go through a change in health with dignity and clarity so therefore you can unite not divide your family and that's another thing too as well anti-gofundme we want to make sure that siblings stay together mom and dad pass away well we want siblings to stay together we don't want you guys looking at each other and say hey so you can pay two thousand bucks you can pay ten thousand bucks you can pay five thousand bucks hey you didn't pay for anything in mom mom and dad's funeral now, for the rest of your life as adult children, guess what? Now you got anger towards you at Thanksgiving, at Christmas. Why? Because nobody planned for the end of life type of situation. If you want to maintain dignity and clarity, and by the way, rich means more than just wealth. It means rich in experiences, rich in relationship, richest in the relationship you have with your siblings as aunts and uncles to your children and nieces and nephews that they can, and cousins that can just play around. If that's what you want in your life, Please don't use GoFundMe for that. Have a conversation with a financial professional, a life insurance agent to make sure, literally for pennies on the dollar, you can get cash in emergency situations where we're uniting families in America and not dividing families in America. Number nine, here's a life insurance strategy to use while you're alive, not in the ground. Early mortgage payoff. Well, Matt, aren't I expected to send a few hundred bucks extra to the mortgage company to pay down the balance of the mortgage? That is correct. You are supposed to do that if you want to pay off the mortgage sooner than later, but instead, of paying it to the mortgage company, you send it to a maximum funded permanent life insurance policy. Because that also grows cash value and equity as time goes on. Because here's the thing, if you send a, a few hundred extra bucks extra a month to the mortgage company and you lose your job in the recession, or in an accident, you, you didn't have life insurance, or you face heart attack, stroke, and cancer, you didn't have life insurance. And guess what, you lost your job, you can't go back to work, you can't generate income, you're spending down your 401ks and Roth IRAs because you didn't get a life insurance policy. Well, guess what happens now? The bank says, listen, this is our money. You don't have the income to qualify for a mortgage to get the money that you send it extra early in, the, in the early years for you to pay back the money you borrowed from us. So therefore, guess what? You've got trapped equity now. It's not like you can say, hey, I'm gonna knock down a wall and hey, hey bank, give me $50,000 for my wall. No, 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 it doesn't happen that way. If you want to pay off your mortgage sooner than later, redirect that money instead into a life insurance policy. So therefore, as the amortization schedule, as you're paying up more of your principal than interest in the 14, 15 year of your mortgage, guess what also starts to increase? The cash value of a life insurance policy. Somewhere in the middle there, between the 14, 15, 16, 17th year, you'll have just as much cash value inside your policy as you have debt balance in your mortgage payment. Guess what you do? You got choices, you got options. Do you want to make a withdrawal or a loan from your policy? Pay off the mortgage balance, it's gonna be completely debt free, or do you want to take a loan from the policy, collateralize that cash value as a loan for money to go buy more real estate or start more business ventures. Man, I love having options. So this is what rich people realize that when you have a life insurance strategy, not just for debt benefit, but for living benefit, you got choices down the road to be a greater investor and better contributor to your community and obviously create more options for your family. Last but not least, how would you like to be your own bank? Imagine having the Anderson Family Bank. Imagine having the Johnson Family Bank. Imagine having the Salvador Family Bank. Well, it's not really a chartered family bank, but it's a conceptual bank using a life insurance policy, which is properly structured and designed using a universal life, whole life, or index universal life policy to be in compliance with the TEFRA tax laws, the DEFRA tax laws, and TAMRA tax laws of 82, 84, and 88. Make a long story short, there are specific ways that you can structure a life insurance policy so therefore you can be your own family bank. Now, I won't get too much into it, but I do have a video out here how I use a maximum fund life insurance policy to buy exotic cars. It's probably one of my most viral videos, but this is way I can get my dream car without spending an arm and a leg. Why? Because the years, the five, the 10 years, 15 years previous to me doing so, I was funding that policy. I was funding a policy. Delayed gratification. Why? I realized 10, 15, 20 years later, man, I can invest in this property. I can buy this car. I can get this office space without borrowing or waiting on anybody to say yes. Why? Because they delayed my gratification to buying those things earlier in life. So now later in life, I have more freedom and flexibility. And guess what? Less interest and less of my money goes to other financial institutions. Instead, that money redirects and goes back to my own family bank, my own financial family 
institution. Wouldn't you rather have that as an option? Please put it here in the comment section. If you want to be your own bank, put it in the comment section. I want to be my own bank. Put it in the comment section. Love to hear what you're thinking. Well, I appreciate you tuning into this video. Let me know what your biggest takeaway. Please put it in the comment section below. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? Please, we want to know. That being said, subscribe, like this video, and please put your biggest takeaway also in the comment section below. I might read it in a future episode down the road. With that being said, I'm your money smart guy from Dallas, Texas. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.